This is the Power Break Podcast number 076, titled Fighting Off Distractions. Hi, I'm Bob Brubaker, along with JT, as we hope you'll stay tuned as we seek to give you a little power in this break to help you succeed in the race of life. This is the Power Break Podcast, with a focus on the spiritual, the mental, and the physical aspects, all to help you succeed in the race of life. For show notes from today's podcast, go to BobRubaker.com and follow the link for the Power Break Podcast. Bob, you're looking very Hawaiian today. Yeah, well, it's my you know best red shirt. This is the Christmas season, so I thought I'd, ah, you know, yes. Melakaliki Maka to you and is yours. It's the thing to say, I hear. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, the question I have for you is, have you uh, recovered from the Ragnar? Man, I have, yeah. Yeah. yeah, you know, I decided I was going to take like, you know, three or four days and just kind of let my body get back to normal. And I got to tell you, not only did it get back to normal, but it got back to eating. So I think I've gained a couple of pounds, but that's all right. I, mean, oh. I, I started running again yesterday, so it's all good. Well, that's cool. Yeah. Did Amy get back? Uh, she she bounced back probably faster than anything. She's a machine, man. Yeah, she's yeah, a machine. Yeah, yeah, she is. <laughs> Hats off to Amy. Yeah. Hey, I got a question. Are you ever distracted from doing your job? Well, I'm sorry. What did you say? I wasn't listening. <laughs> <laughs> See, look at that. There you He's go. Still quick. He got me, yeah, folks. He yeah, got me. That's yeah. JT. <laughs> For, uh, distracted at my job? Yeah. Oh man. As yeah. an officer of the law, do officers of the law ever get distracted, or are you like the? Uh, I see they have a sign at the uh, at the long center where I swim that uh, do not talk to the lifeguard or distract them. Oh, yes. Yeah, it's very maybe, important. Maybe right. do they have signs on the police officers? Do not distract us. <laughs> no, that would be some pretty awful, <laughs> awful customer service. Um, no, you know, I mean, getting distracted is pretty is pretty easy. And, you know, a lot of times bad guys take advantage of that. Yeah, yeah. I, I can show you video after video, like a lot of the training stuff we do. We'll take videos and um, kind of discuss what happened if something went wrong and how we could have done it better. And I can tell you, you know, bad guys do a lot to try to distract officers from what it is that they're hiding, right? Wow. Yeah. So um, I remember watching a video where a guy had, uh, he had a gun as he was a gang member. He had a gun, um, but he gave it to his girlfriend. Well, we kind of know that tactic that usually for gang members, the women are usually the ones carrying the guns in their purse or uh, in their bra or whatever. So um, the officer was talking to him first and the bad guy was going out of his way to distract him. So the girl that you could see on video took the gun out and put it on the front um, car well, put it on the front tire in the car well of the officer's car. Hmm. Because she was right up against there. And then, you know, after he goes over and searches her and makes sure she's not armed, she goes back over there and gets it while he distracts the officer again. Oh, my. Yeah, right? So that's so, on a training video. That's on a training video, yeah. It didn't, fortunately, it didn't happen to me. But it could happen to any of us. I mean, yeah. People easily are easily distracted. That, that is true. Yeah. So yeah. the question is, JT, what do you do when you are distracted? Oh, man, you just got to, you know, number one, you got to recognize you're distracted, which sometimes is hard because, Mm -hmm. you know, you follow the rabbit hole for so long and all of a sudden you realize that you've been distracted for so long. You can't even remember what you were doing. Uh, (laughs) Right. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And then, um, you know, and and just make sure you're you're lock into what it is you're supposed to be doing. You know, realize you're distracted, uh, own it. And then just jump back on what it is you're supposed to be focused on. Um, do ministers ever get distracted in their oh job? My, yeah. <laughs> you know, that's interesting, especially if you serve a small church, you do so many things and uh, you sometimes forget what the main thing is. You know, you're to feed and lead and take care of the sheep. Feed and, and lead. And, I love um, it. and uh, you know, that involves discipleship. And, and so there's uh, all these distractions, you know, things that happen with the church building or, you know, even mercy ministries. You know, the deacons are supposed to handle that. But nevertheless, people try to appeal to the pastor. And so oh, yeah, there's, a, there's a million distractions. And if you're not careful, you, you really have to have in your mind what is the main thing and keep yep. as you'll preacher said to keep the main thing the main thing <laughs> the point is we all fight distractions and that's just a fact of life and there will be times of distraction and it seems that the more we rely upon electronics there are, seem to be more temptations than ever to be distracted but what are we to do well I'll take a lesson from the lord jesus christ when he was distracted from doing his job 
because he was troubled. He was entering into Jerusalem for the final time just before his crucifixion, and he said to his disciples, Now my soul is troubled, but what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour, but for this purpose I came to this hour. That's the important point. He knew what the main thing was. Right. For this purpose I came to this hour. So in order to fight off distractions, we need to have a plan and stay the course. Yep. And let's keep talking about that as we turn to your blog. Uh, folks, if you haven't been to BobRubaker.com, I encourage you to go over there, check out the blog that comes out weekly. If you sign up for it and subscribe, it will show up in your inbox every Monday. Um, but the blog is titled Fighting Off Distractions. Um, so, it, you know, life is so distracting because of how much technology and how convenient everything oh, is. Oh, it right? really is. It's interesting, on this article, when I published it, I had several requests to uh, print it. Uh, yeah. People asked, hey, mind if I print that and hand it to several people in my office? Oh, that's good. You know, anyway, yep. I, I appreciate the, the confidence expressed in that. But as I said there on the article, just think about how many things that constantly call out for your attention during the day. You really can't do much of anything without a constant barrage of texts, emails, phone calls, personal interruptions besides the temptations to check your social social media and various entertainment sources. I'm sure if you added up all the distracting things that cry out for your attention, you'd just be shocked. And here are a few tips then on how to remain focused amidst the many distractions. Yeah, let's hear it. One uh, I put down is to decide on a plan of action. Too many times people go through life in haphazard acts of disarray and wonder why they didn't accomplish very much because it seems that each day is, is being launched into a pinball game, mount, bouncing from one thing to the other with no real plan of action. So, as they said, who's that guy on the Shark Tank? Kevin O'Leary says, stop the madness. Stop <laughs> you don't have madness. to be like that. In fact, if you study the people that accomplish the most, they follow a plan. Yeah. I think that's one of the keys that you stay in uh, getting back on course when you're distracted. You have a plan. Yep, that's it. I mean, it's and if you don't have that plan, and for me, it's gotten to the point to where I I write it down. So that way I know I'll actually sit down, I'll talk about all the things that I have to get done, and Mm -hmm. I will put them in order of importance, and I will keep that with me during the day. Oh, that's a great time management tool. Yeah. Hats off you, JT. um, Well, I keep learning time management from a friend of mine in a really bright red shirt today. (laughs) I don't know who that is. Well, the question you might say, was Jesus ever tempted, tempted with distractions? Well, constantly... Uh, Whether it was the crowd calling for his attention, his enemies that were always challenging him, or the disciples whose needs of shepherding were ever before him, there was a constant call for him to deviate from what he was doing and change his focus. Now, Jesus, however, stuck to his plan and accomplished exactly what he was set out to do by God himself. Stop and think about it. He had the job of saving us from our sins to dying on the cross. But along the way, he had to train his disciples and shepherd them, if you please, and prepare them for a worldwide ministry that's going to happen soon thereafter, his uh, resurrection and his ascension. And so stop and think about it. He has to get those guys involved while he continues to care for the needs of the people and demonstrate that he is the son of God. And so he was doing miracles, etc. Well, of course, the first step in staying focused is deciding upon a plan of action. So let's back up in the order then in a plan of action. That person must establish priorities as to what's really important. Many times therein lies the conflict because there's never been an establishment of what's most important. Wow. As one guy said, yep. when you are focused on the main thing and uh, the main thing is the main thing, in order to do that, you have to know what the main thing is. <laughs> <laughs> you said main thing so much, I almost lost you. But yeah, no, you're yeah, right. You, you have to be able to say, this is the most important thing in my life. And it, it's kind of like the mission statement thing we've talked about yeah, before, yeah. right? In order for a business to be successful is you have to come up with a mission statement, the purpose for your existence. And everything you do, every decision needs to be run through that statement. It's exactly right. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And, that, and why, when you have to keep the main thing the main thing, you go back to the main thing, and that is the mission statement. Yep. So the mission statement isn't just a handy statement. It's actually keep you on track. Well, the second thing I wrote down was to develop a return plan. Now, no matter how determined you are to follow a plan of action, there are always those things that call for immediate attention and those times that you catch yourself following a deterrent and find yourself off track. Now, when you find yourself in such a state, the way to return is to take control and get yourself back on. Now, the Apostle Paul did this, described pushing aside the distractions of false religion and fleshly thinking and 
bringing our thoughts, as he said, into captivity to the obedience of Christ. I think that's what you talked about, too. The way you get back is that you stop what you're doing and get back on track. And so you actually have a plan for return. Yep. Yep. You know, I love when uh, a lot of people look at this part of Scripture and they say, wow, you know, Jesus was very... He was very abrupt to Peter, but when he actually tells Peter to get behind me, Satan, mm. when he talks about, you know, it, not yeah, you. Peter was actually trying to deviate him from his he was. from his, his goal. Because yep. yep. he, he said, I'm going to Jerusalem to die. No, no, Peter yep. said. Yep. He said yep. And that's when he said, get behind me, Satan, which is, he, he, he was being the distraction himself. Yeah, for he sure. Yep. All right. By the way, that having a plan of action for returning when you do get messed up is actually something that um, I've heard many coaches describe if you're running a race or like I did Ironman triathlons, who said to have in your mind a return of action if things go bad. For yeah. instance, have in your mind worked out if you have a flat tire on the 112-mile bike ride of the Ironman triathlon, what are you going to do when you have that flat tire? Yep. Okay, you're going to be way out of line, and so you know, you're, you're going to have to work your way back. Are you going to do it hurry, hurriedly? And waste all that energy, you're going to just slowly come back. Yeah. You know, and if you're running, then what happens if you blow out a shoe? <laughs> well, I don't know. That might be tough to run barefoot. Can you imagine if you did the Ragnar barefooted? No, I could barely imagine doing it in shoes because how many roots you hit with their, mm. your toes. I mean, that's just like, you know, your toes are always so messed up. Oh. So, no. It, it makes me hurt thinking about that one now. So, that, that you say that, I didn't prepare. So, thank goodness that my uh, my shoe didn't blow out when I hit one of those 40 yeah. roots that I hit yeah. toe on. Yeah. Closest I ever came to running on a Ragnar was just training 10 miles in the woods. and It's the same thing, I, man. I it's the same some, thing. I talked this guy into doing it. I just received... I think I told you this before, but uh, I, the first, my first slot in the Ironman World Championship. I well, just when you hurt the, yourself. I, I went out. <laughs> I talked this guy into running ten miles with me through the woods, and I said it'll be so relaxing. And I stepped on a root and dislocated my ankle. Uh-huh. And I said, "Hmm." I stamped it back in place. Ugh. And uh, <laughs> then I decided hmm, I could hobble back and uh, go home and take some Advil or whatever to keep the swelling down. Or else I, I could let my body produce endorphins. So we ran the rest of the 10 miles. <laughs> there you went. Yeah. And then I came yeah. home with a very swollen ankle, and then I found out that I broke a bone in the ankle. Too. Now tell me, what did you learn from that, Bob? That's the most important thing I want to know. <laughs> don't talk someone into running in don't the woods. Don't tell JT my secrets. That's <laughs> what you just learned. Don't talk, to some, don't talk someone into running in the woods telling them how <laughs> simple it is. And if you get an iron, a slot in the Iron Man, take care of yourself. Man, that's the killer. But yeah. I'm very thankful I did bounce back rather quickly. Anyway, the third thing I wrote on the article was to exercise determination. Determination is not a mysterious trait that only a few enjoy. It's there for everyone who will exercise it in small things so that the bigger temptations come along to distract you. It's a matter of applying the determination. Yeah. As I mentioned, that Jesus was determined when he was distracted by the anxiety of the moment. He said, my soul is troubled. Yeah. He said, what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour, but for this purpose I came to this hour. He was determined. Paul was determined, as he said in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, I'm determined to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. Yep. So the question is, are, are you a determined person? Well, you have to be in order to bounce back when you're distracted. Yeah, you absolutely have to be. You know, and Paul talked about always... Um, You know, not that he had achieved anything, but he was always constantly keeping his eyes on Christ. He was constantly moving towards a goal. And as he says, I'm running the race like one who wants to win it. That's right. Right. It's determination. Yep. Just look at those guys that are getting ready to finish the the, uh, Boston Marathon when they come down to finish. Whoa. They are determined to get there. Boy, are they ever. Yeah, Yeah, buddy. Yeah. Or Or the 19th. Full Iron Man that you're running. I bet you you were very determined when you were running it. Yeah, and the last one, the 19th, was not a very pretty Iron Man either, especially at the marathon because I could hardly walk. My knees were so bad. Oh, no. And uh, I was hurting for certain, but I was determined to get there, especially as the in the Iron Man competition, they closed the course at midnight, which is 17 hours into it. Wow. And even if you're hurting and certain, which I was at that time, I had no business being out there, but I tried to do it and... I was hurting, and so I was determined to make, and I made the cutoff by a, a long shot. But nevertheless, it was it took a lot of determination. You're right. Yeah, that's in the back of your mind, and I know the way your body works. Your body screams at your mind. 
Stop. You can stop right now, <laughs> and all this will go away. <laughs> I always tell people, you know, it's interesting in triathlons, especially the longer triathlons. It's always amazing to me when you get to the, you know, you swim, bike, and run. And so when you get to the run, you've accomplished a lot already. But it's yeah. always, it always amazes me how they find a way to take the run next to a golf course. And you see those guys in golf carts. Oh, yeah. And you think, yeah, that's really <laughs> evil in every way. Yeah. Anyway, the fourth thing, we're, we're getting distracted here. Let's get back on course. That's I'm right. determined to do that. <laughs> and here's my plan. Look at number four, which is to focus on the finish. From prioritizing to making a plan of action to executing it to fighting off uh, things and getting your way back to uh, getting back on track to living by determination to keep it going. The real key is to focus on finishing whatever you started out doing. That's important. Yeah. Jesus did that when it says in Hebrews chapter 12 that he, for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame. Paul said, this is why I suffer as I do. I'm not ashamed for I know whom I have believed and am be- convinced that he's able to guard against that day what I've entrusted to him. Um, it's interesting in my Ironman triathlon time, those 19 Ironmans, what I really enjoyed was the uh, time when you get to the marathon, you know, swimming 2.4 miles, biking 112, then you're on the marathon, especially near the end of the marathon. Yeah. And you find one person after another who's discouraged. They just, I mean, their body says, you're not running anymore. Yeah, and so they're walking. That's a lot of and work. And so, I mean... I came across this one guy one time, and I said, are you all right? And he goes, nah, I'm gonna, I think I'm going to drop out. And I said, consider how far you've gone, man. Walk to the finish if you have to. Yeah. And then I said this time, I said, tell me what you plan to do when you cross that finish line. Okay, now his eyes lit up. Yeah, because he was focused on the problem. Uh, and all of a sudden, he saw be. himself. I said, are you going to raise your arms? Are you going to go, yes, or what are you going to do? And he started to describe it. And it was about... Um, a quarter mile after that, he started to run. Oh, it's awesome. And, as, you know, the whole point is when we focus on the finish, and that is that whatever you're distracted from doing, get in the mind's eye what it looks like to finish that project. Yep, yep. And finish that goal. Anyway, you check it out at bobrubaker.com. The, uh, the, the blog, of course, is Fighting Off Distractions, and you can check it out and uh, other blogs that I have at bobrubaker.com. All right. What else is happening, Bob? Anything news? Any news going on? Well, I wanted to step in here and uh, just give a little pitch. Since you are the master, you seem to be mastering some of the principles that I wrote in the book on time management. I thought I just master, (laughs) almost like I read it. Yeah. (laughs) Hmm. Maybe I wrote it based on your life. Let me tell you, man, you could write a lot of self-help books about me. <laughs> so you knock yourself out. Well, yeah. We could call it, inst- uh, instead of power living, we could call it JT living. <laughs> man, yeah, what to strive not to do. Yeah. Well, the power of time management is exactly that. We're taking some biblical principles, applying it to time management, and uh, uh, it's in a book that I put together to help people because I seem to be talking about time management all the time. Which is a good thing to do because the more you get out of your life, it says we're to redeem the time or make the most of our time because the days are evil. It says that in Ephesians chapter 5. So check it out. The book is called The Power of Time Management. You can click on the link of the resources on the, um, the webpage, bobbrewbaker.com, and scroll down to the books, and then you'll notice all the books that are there. Click on that one, and it'll take you to the way that you can get one. Also, check out the sermon links at uh, our website, bobrubaker.com, the sermon links to the sermons I preach here at Christ Community Presbyterian Church. Check it out today, bobrubaker.com. All right, so here we go. It's time for What About This? That's the time on the podcast for questions and answers. If you have a question for me or Bob, please feel free to submit your questions by email to jt at bobrubaker.com, and we'll get to answering them on an upcoming Power Break podcast. So, so JT, Whoa. what's your recommendation for people? Is you know, I mean, do you have another recommendation for distractions, fighting off distractions? You just took me off the script, man. Now I'm totally distracted. <laughs> 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 okay, well, um, we'll get back. You think about that, and you can bring you it know, in any time. Well, the, the, you know, the, the you hit on it earlier. For me, it's the electronics and the things that are around you that will get you distracted mm. every single time, right? I mean. It, Going for a run, like, without music, man, that gets you 
you need to train your brain to kind of relax a little bit. That's been something that I've really focused on oh, yeah. is because one of the things that I've noticed about me, especially the older I get um, with kids, with responsibility at work, with responsibility at church, with trying to learn new songs every week, um, it, I, I can very easily not get everything I need to get done done if I'm scatterbrained about how I apply my time. Oh, Focus. But I, it's it's so important for me to work into that a time for rest, meditation, and a time where I'm not thinking about anything except for the gratitude I feel for the things that are in my life and around me. Whoa! Yeah, good yeah. good counsel, JT. Thanks, buddy. Mark it down. That's good. Yeah. Well, you know, if you don't do that, what I find is you're never going to feel any kind of joy as you're going through your day. Um, because constantly doing something one minute after the other is tiring yeah, and is. we're not, I mean, it, Sunday is there for a reason, right? It's a mm-hmm. Lord's day. Um, it's for recuperation as well as focus on the Lord. That's where you get the gratitude. That's what the whole day is built for. Well, if I don't work that time into every single day, man, by the time I get to Sunday, I'm a train wreck. Yeah, yeah. that's good. Good, good counsel because the uh, blue screens, as they say, the blue screens of uh, oh yeah, you know, computers and phones and televisions, they they distract us really. The electronically, it really stimulates the brain, and so getting away from that is really important. Yeah, yeah, getting away from stimulation, and that's JT's answer today, folks. That's it. We're done. I'll talk to you guys later. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't even gotten to question number one, Bob. Okay. You're not going to get Sorry. off the hook okay. of that easy. All right. Yeah. All right. So um, before we even talk about fighting off distractions, I think we first need to figure out what are the distractions in our life, right? What And what isn't a distraction in our life? Stop and think about it. The first and foremost distraction is anything that keeps you from the greatest commandment. Jesus said the greatest commandment is this, to love the Lord your God with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and to love your neighbors yourself. Anything that distracts us from that is a distraction. There it is. That's yeah. the key to it. Okay. Um, he says, First uh, Peter chapter 2, it says that you're, you're just a sojourner in exile here in this earth. And so that's to keep in mind that we don't belong here. This is, is not our home anyway. But he right. says, abstain from the passions of the flesh, which war against your soul. That's distraction. Right. Passions of the flesh. Galatians says the desires of the flesh, they war against the spirit and the spirit, uh, and the desires of the spirit are against the flesh. In other words, there's a conflict within. We must recognize that. And so we must have a plan of action. As Jesus says, I came down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. Right. He was very focused on what he was doing. So the point is, anything that keep, takes us off the mark is a distraction. And it begins with the foremost commandment, to love the Lord your God with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Now, whatever takes you away from that commandment. That is so good. That's a yep. distraction. Yeah, that is so good. You know, I, I, I think about, when I was a new Christian, I think about when I see the people around me in my group or, or in the worship team or whatever that are new Christians. You know, one of, the, one of the things that I think is important is this concept of not being distracted. Because what happens once you become a Christian, once you start to read the Word, once you start to actually commune with the Holy Spirit and you start to really get to a point to where you're walking towards Christ... There are never more distractions that occur in your life than there because that war that you talked about yeah. between the flesh, because you just came out of a life to where everything said, you're it's all about chain. making you feel good, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You're on a, like a link of a chain, it says in Ephesians chapter two, that you were being led along by the spirit that now works in the children of disobedience. That's the devil himself. You were just on his chain. Yep. yep. You were doing whatever he wants. Now yeah. you're free from that. And yet the, the part of it that part of you that enjoyed that wants to go back to it. Yep. And yet there's something in you that says, no, I don't. So there's this constant conflict. And yep. so there's, so we have to guard against those distractions and say, let's go back. And that's why what you said is absolutely got to be the most important thing is getting back to loving the Lord with all your heart, mind, and soul, right? Mm-hmm. It's got to go back to that first. Um, because that's, what's going to keep you from being pulled back into it. It's one of those things that, as the old preacher said, we need to be all in. All in. Yep. All in. Yep. Um, so from a mental standpoint, as we go to uh, question number two, 
Help us to recognize the, um, or what are the mental guards, really, that we can put in place to help us recognize the distractions that are in our life. I love how the Apostle Paul talked about that. It says in Second Timothy chapter 1, he says, Therefore, do not be ashamed of the testimony about the Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but share in the suffering for the gospel, for the power of God, who saved us and called us to a holy calling, not because of our works, but because of his own purpose and grace, which he gave us in Christ Jesus before the world began. Now, notice he says, don't be ashamed of this. So that's a distraction when we're ashamed of thought. In other words, instead of loving the Lord our God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength, we kind of hesitate. Oh. Okay, that's a, that's a distraction. Wow, I never really thought about that. Baby. And he says, so be ready right. to suffer. So suffer means we're ready to, to go all in no matter what it costs. And then it says, and he says, he says, I have been appointed a preacher, an apostle. He says, which is why I suffer as I do. Okay. He says, but I'm, but I'm not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed mm-hmm. and am convinced that he is able to guard against uh, until that day that which has been entrusted to me. So I'm holding on to what he does, knowing that he's not distracted. Right. Okay, so he's not distracted from caring for me or caring about what he's promised to me. So we need to follow the pattern that he says of sound words, Paul says to Timothy, uh, follow the pattern of sound words that you have heard from me in the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. Wow. It's a, that's a good example right there. Second Timothy chapter 1, verses 8 through 13. Good Good lesson there to get, you know, when we recognize distractions and how we're going to deal with it. Yep. Um, actually, before we turn to question number three, well, actually, it's got a lot to do with question number three because somebody asked me this and I didn't know the answer, but you would absolutely know the answer. So, how do you qualify to go to Kona as an Ironman triathlete? Uh, there's a couple different ways. There's, uh, number one, you qualify at a qualifying race. Okay. Okay. And, and is there a certain, like, time limit that you have to make? No. Is that how they work Here's that what or? they do. They, they have, I think at one time they had 1,500. I think they're up to 2,000 slots now in the, in the world championship. Okay. So they divvy those up in the various races they have as qualifying races around the world. And then... From those races, say a, a, a say a certain race had a hundred qualifying slots, they would divvy divvy up those those slots within uh, that race among the age groups proportionately. So if you oh, okay, were in an gotcha. age group that had six, and there was an age group that had a hundred, they would get probably three slots compared to one slot in your age group. Gotcha. Okay. Once the race is finished, they would take the top finishers. Uh, say if your your group had the top two, they would take the top two finishers. Now, when you qualify, and if you want a slot, you have to pay for the race. <laughs> you have right. to bring your checkbook, okay, or your credit card or something to pay for the race at that time. Now, oh, some people like are that not day. That, that right then. You're wow. not getting going on here with a slot unless you pay. So you might have, you know. So you wow. take your checkbook with you or your credit card right, that's able to do that, and then. If the first two, if say you had two slots and the first two guys, if one of those two or both of them don't take it, it trickles down to the third and the fourth and, you know. Oh, man. Uh, so sometimes you go to a race and you have an eighth place finisher uh, going on to Hawaii that people look at it and say, how did he get it? Because the first people didn't want it. nobody else had the checkbook. Yeah. Right. And but. so, and, and it's quite frankly to go to Hawaii, you know, that's quite a commitment. I mean, oh, it's a wonderful yeah, honor. Yeah, for sure. Don't get me wrong. It's a wonderful yeah. honor, but I think, you know, back when I did in 1999 and 2000, we counted on around $4,000 for the trip plus the entry fee to the Ironman. I mean, That's it was plus a, the entry fee plus to the, the Iron entry Man. fee to the Ironman. Wow. Because when you go, you have to fly your bike and you have, you have you fly and you stay over there for a while. And who wants to go to Hawaii for just one night? Oh, yeah, for sure. You're not going to just fly <laughs> in for that pain festival. You're going to want to enjoy yeah, it a yeah. little bit. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, there's a lot involved in it. And uh, I admire the fact that people have done it and the very fact that I've done the World Championship twice. I'm very grateful. And of course, I'm grateful that while I was doing that, I was also sponsored by Spam. I was going to say, did Spam get you there too? Yeah. Uh, Yes. Yeah, that's and it's cool. interesting because the first time I when I sent my my uh, uh, proposal to Spam, I I was wanted somebody. I was going to offer them to pay. I would wear their jersey if they would pay for my my hotel bill. Well, they ended up paying for much more. That's awesome. And yeah, uh, I was so very grateful. I was very grateful. So it was fun. So that's how you get to Hawaii. And uh, there's a lot of people that qualify that never even want to go. They they 
I mean, they, they, I mean, it sounds great and everything else and quite an honor. It's quite an honor to go there. You know, you're, you're competing with the best in the world Yeah, and it's on television and everything, but, uh, it is very expensive. Yeah. That sounds like it. If you're not a sponsored athlete, that's gotta be very difficult. Very difficult. Yeah. Um, all right. Now it's okay to turn to question number three. Now that I have that question answered, I'm going to stop being distracted. Number three. <laughs> Turning the physical aspect of life. So it, what is your favorite go-to workout when you have just a little bit of time? You don't have a lot. Okay. Well, I won't do to you what I did last time when I said oh, take oh. a nap. Take a nap. Yeah, exactly. You did lay him out on me last time. <laughs> so, uh, the, yeah, yeah. I think the swim workout is probably the most bang for the buck I get. If really? I, yeah. yeah. I mean, you can get a swim workout and, you know, you can warm up pretty quickly and you get some hard work. Although yesterday I got a really quick workout, I was I just went across the causeway, and I and I came back. I, I was, you know Mondays are because I'm tired from the weekend. I had, oh yeah, because you, know, you have the Saturday right? Saturday, and then I'm preaching on Sunday, and so I'm kind of, my legs are kind of tired. So I went out easy over the causeway, and I came back in my highest gear. Wow, just that's kept, a great workout. Kept yep. it in the highest gear and did I did intervals in the highest gear, and then even when I let up, it was still I kept it in that gear. And even when I came to the bridge and went over the bridge, it was in the highest gear. And I was, my legs were really cranking yesterday. Yeah, I mean, that would gas you yeah. for sure. Sometimes I do a weight workout, do a um, circuit training. I try that. Yeah. Um, there are sometimes you can't get to the gym, and so you do, um, you know, sets of um, air squats and sets of burpees and and uh, push ups. Do what yeah. you have to do, JT. How about you? That, you that are the true. man who does a little and a, a lot in a little time. Yeah, I'm a speed guy, man. It's got to get done. Yeah. Um, I, if I have a choice, um, I'll usually do, if I have just a little bit of time, I'll usually do something in the gym. Um, and like you said, it's a circuit. So I try to make it quick. So I get a little bit of cardio out of it. Um, but it's really, I, I think you talked about it. I, I probably feel the best I do. Uh, after a workout, after a gym workout. So um, just lifting weights is, like you, like you said, I think it makes you smarter, right? It does make you, <laughs> it does make you smarter, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so um, that's probably my number one. Number two is going for a really quick run and, and doing intervals on that run. That'll get it knocked yeah. out pretty quick. If you yeah. just pick a heart rate right below like a zone, maybe high zone three um, workout, that'll, that'll get you every time, so. That's my favorite. Well, regardless of what workout you do, if you're going to do a workout, it takes discipline, and discipline does make the difference in all aspects of life, as we always say. Check out today's show notes at BobRubaker.com. Click on the Power Break podcast. Today is show number 076. And submit your questions by email to JT at BobRubaker.com and listen for Bob or my answer on an upcoming Power Break podcast. Just before we go here, I want to stop in and say something about the book that I've written called Battle for the Mind. It's actually a series of power break uh, blogs that I put together on, all on the subject of mind, how you work on your mind and the mental things of life and how um, there's spiritual um, uh, instruction of that in the Word of God. It's called The Battle for the Mind, and it's found at BobRebecker.com. Check it out. Click on the books as you go down through the resources, check on the books, and then the book is called The Battle for the Mind, BobRubaker.com. Well, thank you for joining us for the Power Break Podcast. Please subscribe and leave a review wherever you've downloaded the podcast, and check out show notes, news, weekly uh, Bob's weekly blog, and other cool things at BobRubaker.com. And listen next time for the Power Break Podcast.